hauled by cables, the rock cars proceed into the crusher house. into the primary crusher. After this brief but crushing experience, the rock's own mother wouldn't know it. After which it is passed through screens and sorted into various sizes. It is sent on to the secondary crusher for further crushing into smaller size aggregate. In another section of the development is the impressive sand pile. Shovels dig their steel jaws into the grit as avidly as Junior at his Christmas dinner. For the necessary concrete, it is estimated that more than 260,000 cubic yards or 8,700 carloads of sand will be required. Well, with the help of a calculating machine and a lot of perseverance, the number of actual grains might be figured. Time here, however, is much too precious for that. concrete mixing plant. Trains of empty cars are hauled to the mixing plant to stand by for loads of the finished material. of two-yard capacity concrete mixers keep on turning and whirling their contents, dipping every now and then to belch forth the newly created concrete. Massive mechanical men, these, striving to do their part in the maturing of a great hydroelectric dream. Concrete having been loaded, the cars are off to the scene of operations. A veritable hive of industry. A continual stream of traffic is maintained throughout the day and night as rock, sand and cement trains, in addition to concrete trains, thread their way on their respective missions. With the gorge its destination, the concrete train makes its way steadfastly. Finally arriving on the bridge. The concrete is then dumped into waiting chutes and slithers downwards on its journey. The hopper cars are speedily emptied. the apparently intricate maze of girders, guy wires, and chutes, the concrete is conveyed. This web-like picture of various structures gives an excellent idea of the imposing proportions of the big job. These are the suspended chutes, the ends of which being so designed that they may be readily controlled by the men who direct the placing of the concrete.
damping is unnecessary, as the descending material is packed by the force of its own fall. The arrival of noon means, of course, let's eat. And the big parade to the dining room stops. You know, poets have gone into rhythmic ecstasies over lesser things than a midday meal at a construction camp. The grand sortie from all points continues as the 2,000 workers make a beeline for what is commonly known as grub. The food in this camp is the best in every respect. More than 3,000 pounds of fresh and cured meats are consumed in the course of one day's meal. And one look at the diners will explain how and why. Main Street after the dinner hour finds everybody enjoying the noontime's respite from labor. Care has been taken to look after the health and general welfare of the men and their families with a fully equipped hospital. Moreover, recreation is provided for in several ways, with tennis courts, a skating rink, reading rooms, and so forth. Of extreme importance also is the school maintained for the employees' youngsters with trained teachers in charge. Meanwhile, the Canyon Special rolls into town with supplies and mail. But back on the job again, a number of drills are hard at work breaking up the Earth's crust, and excavators are digging earth to prepare for the spillway. And here may be seen the east training wall, which will border the spillway whose duty it is to carry off the surplus water. Construction work proceeds rapidly on the dam itself, now assuming recognizable shape. A group of the Dominion Construction Corporation's engineers discuss the proceedings. I guess we're figuring out, Gordon, you know, how much work we've done and how much more there is to do on the job. Seems to be quite a bit. Lee, why do you think you can pour tomorrow in the way of concrete? About 3,200 yards tomorrow. To do that, you've got the day's record. That's what we expect to get. Well, finally, on that reinforcing steel, you think you can get that fixed up so we know how much we got on the job? Yes, about 1,000 tons altogether, sir. On the uh, lumber, Mac, how many million feet of board measures do you think we've used? I think about 13 million. They're up to date. Uh, just about right. There's about 13 and three quarters. Well, how much do you think you're going to have on the power house, Mike? Well, around a million and a half. 